that people are doing things with their own hands they are conscious about what they are doing how they are making things and up you are personally liable when you do something by yourself and you are selling something you become liable to that person no matter what product it is so obviously when you do something up jo handmade industry wo bahut conscious hai ki wo jo bhi banaye jo bhi kare usko acche se wo acha ho it should not you know kisi bhi tarike se koi mistake nahi ho kuch nahi ho you put in a lot of hard work to it and uh, that's why and people uh, also people who are buying handmade products are really कि ये जो जो भी वो सामान वो लेते हैं एक हैंडमेड इंडस्ट्री से वो बहुत कॉन्शियसली बना हुआ होता है यूनिकनेस का एक बहुत बड़ा फैक्टर है पीपल वांट यूनिक थिंग्स नाउ डेज I am Jitendra Singh, banker turned entrepreneur and author of the book Pep Hack: Mastering the Art of Selling. I welcome you to read my story where I interview authors, speakers, coaches, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and more. Today I have with me Miss Neha Bhatia. She has done BCom and MBA in finance. Then she started working uh, in a corporate sector for two years. Then uh, after marriage, she worked with her uh, husband in his company for a while. Now she is in force uh, behind the Skinnick company and also the person that formulates, creates, packages, markets, and sells these products. The brand, as the name suggests, is made from two words, uh, which are very simple: skin uh, plus unique. So it is Skinnick. Her aim is to give her client a unique product that will not only pamper their skin but make them fall in love for it every day. The brand was born as part-time quest uh, to make handsome soaps, uh, but with the time diverged into the skincare products like lip balm, lip soaps, cleansing balm, lip jelly, lotion bar. and many more skin loving products these products use natural skin loving oils butters fragrances and essential oils with plant based preservatives to give their customer the best skin experience they deserve she recently uh, diverged into hand making soya wax candles wax melts and wax sachet to enhance homes all the wax and fragrances used are chemical free can make any home or uh, any space fragrant and fresh each smell uh, small batches of product is made with utmost care using natural ingredients and lots of love so today uh, she would be sharing with us about her life journey so let us hear from her welcome neha the platform is open and now over to you Thank you so much, Jitendra. How yeah. are you? Very nice meeting you today. Great, and looking forward to it. So, first thing I'd like to know from your side is how did your uh, past life has affected the person who you wanted to be in your life and what you are. Um, I am the youngest, you know, in my family. I have uh, elder siblings, so I was always made to do a lot of work. So do this, do that. So I've always known that, you know, you whatever you have to do, if you have to achieve something, there is a lot of work that you have to do. Nothing comes in easy, and so I think that only helped me while I was in school, in college, and then later right now in life. You just have to work, 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 and that's how you achieve something. Plus, um, I have come from a very simple background. My father was into service, so uh, I have seen him that you know you don't get anything sitting at home. You um, until unless you go out and do something and you want to achieve, you have those dreams. Uh, nothing will come to you ever. So these things have yeah helped me in you know seeing who, where I am today and you know what I want to do maybe in the future. Right, great. Like that. So uh, when you were growing, you would be having certain thoughts about career choices or uh, what you wanted to. Like being your life, or you what you wanted to do in your life, anything of that sort. There were lots of choices. So yeah, while I was growing up, I did have a lot of career choices, career options, lot of dreams that I want to do this, I want to become that. But uh, while you grow, once you're grown up, you realize not everything is achievable. And आप जो बचपन में इतने thoughts देखते हो, वो सारे नहीं हो जाते पूरे हो पाते हैं. But yeah, I still work towards it. Then I realized that you know, corporate. I have worked in corporate for two three years, and I realized that it was not for me. My dreams were very different. I was more a hands on person and i wanted to get into something where i was doing something you know something creatively i didn't want that monotonous uh, job you know sitting from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening the laptop ke samne tick 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 and all that so that was that was not for me i wanted to be by myself kuch alag karna tha kuch different karna tha apne aap ke liye and so that's why i shifted my focus from that and uh, i looked into myself ki mujhe kaise kya karna hai and when i realized that i was into this 
creative side of mine when i opened it and that's how i landed up here great wonderful so uh, if i talk about things you are passionate in your life what are those things passions have changed i would say over time as you grow up the, these things do i have been the the constant passion about my life has been reading i am a i love i am a very big avid reader so that has one that's one big passion of mine currently my two children are a very big passion of mine i am very passionate about them i, I you know i work very hard towards them and uh, second is uh, uske baad i have a passion is uh, just to do something you know to do something in life and be cre- uh, just be out there um, to show people the just for just for my children sake i want them to, i want them to see that you have to work hard you have to persevere and uh, nothing nothing is easy to to do all of that so i think showing them may, uh, become making them become better people in life and uh, it's it all revolves around them to unko kaise bada karna hai unki soch ko kaise acche se modify karna hai to be a better person so i have to be a better person if i want them to be a better person so to to you know to do that in life i think i think that's my goal and that's my passion right raising uh, kids is uh, one big responsibility and uh, like off uh, and i'm and loving on... it it's a, it's a very good one yeah. yes yes i didn't think i on... would but yeah i'm enjoying it correct and often on you have to show them the ways uh, of doing things in life and you can only do uh, that by creating an example of your own self whatever you do they exactly. see and they learn they see and they follow exactly so the way you talk the way you sit the way you behave with other people around you not just people you know uh, uh, strangers animals things everything around you the way you are uh, that's how that's what they imbibe and that's what they become right. so it's very important to to you know to have a self focus that apne aap ko aap acche se conduct karo uh so and i think unse bhi just to show them that you know the world can be a better place and maybe i am improving myself because of that correct just that you is, know so that they are better citizens yeah that is really wonderful thing because uh, the best thing we can do is first we should improve ourselves so that people around us can feel and see what we are uh, coming up with so wonderful on exactly, that exactly yeah so if i talk about your work and experiences you mentioned that you worked for a while uh, in corporate then you also worked in your husband's company so how were mm-hmm. your experiences um, there what all you did and how your journey as an entrepreneur as a business person started um i uh, yeah i was in corporate for 2 2 3 years it was it was a good experience i had fun but it was short lived and i wasn't really very unhappy when i left it i was i left that job maybe to look for another job but somehow it didn't happen and then even when i joined my husband's company it went pretty well i was i was happy to work for them but like i said 9 to 5 is not my kind of a thing so that also died down and this work it it just happened all of a sudden like you say destiny it just had to happen something just clicks in your mind and uh, when i uh, when i came across the handmade or soap industry so it just clicked i somehow knew that yeah i want to do this i want to get into it and i want to root for a very long time like for a very uh, you know long run it's not going to be like a short term project so that is how my handmade soap journey started which has evolved a lot since then it's been uh, on and off i would say it's been 6 to 7 years i've been working in this industry taking little breaks because of my children and other things so that's how i have you know from one thing to the other and it has finally led me here where i am right. and i think so i want to be here for a very long time and i'm going to stay and you have been experimenting with other other things yes i got into handmade soaps but then i realized that you know it's it's a very small thing in a very big you know in a very big pond so i from that i went into bath bombs i started doing lip balms then uh, other cleansing products i have everything uh, the i did into whipped soaps bath salts stuff like that and uh, then when i took another break with my son when my son was born i took another break and that's when i realized i have another passion and that was candle making so now i'm also into handmade candles. and also soy wax sachets and you know wax mills everything organic i i hardly try using chemicals there are no artificial preservatives all all things are very natural 
everything is all plant derived so one thing like i said one thing rolled into the other and uh, it's a big package now right and that is uh, really important for everyone uh, of us because what happens is we are using so many chemicals in whatever products we are using so it's better to opt for products which are uh, chemical free which are plant based natural organic so it's really important at this age we should opt for these type of products because it is uh, user friendly like skin friendly uh, it is also health friendly and mm-hmm. it is also environment friendly as well ha uh, it's also because abhi since you know the population is growing so much there's so much of mass production people who do mass production it's very difficult for them to be organically sound they need to because it's not like it should not be ethical but yeah they do use a lot of chemicals because they want people want you know we want bubbles in our soap and we want bubbles in our shampoo so mass product produce, things are like that but right. now that people are becoming aware that these things are not really good for you in the long run so they are turning towards hand made handmade products and handmade stuff and they're realizing that uh, you know these things they are they, they are a little costly to be used but in the long run they help you they help your skin they help you and internally also you feel better when you use all these things right. i have seen a big improvement uh, in my in myself only being a teenager you know you have you after you know you have a aging skin when you become you get, you get into your 30s and your 40s Correct. so yes i have seen a major improvement in myself and a lot of people around me also have told me that after using my product that they're pretty happy with their uh, with this the way their skin looks and it feels right great so uh, you're working on a really wonderful cause uh, which is really in need of an r so if i talk about the vision mission and goal of uh, your life for next 5 to 10 years what is that for the next 5 to 10 years i just want uh, i just want my work to grow organically in a very nice way just to help people around yes everybody is in it for money that is that is a goal obviously i want to achieve something in life but i also want that you know whoever uses my things they are happy they come back again they're satisfied and uh, it's not just like a one time use i want people to feel happy about this can if I, even uh, the candles that i'm making they're also soy wax so they do the, the candles don't, don't harm the environment they're not very bad for your lungs when you inhale them like paraffin waxes so your house should smell friendly your house should smell you know should be smelling very fragrant and very nice but at the same time it should not be harming you your body the environment so i just want to take this and go further and you know maybe multiply it as many times as i can but i want to stay focused with the thing that it it should all be organic and not be chemical there no should be no chemicals involved and that's how i want to progress right that's really important a uh, wonderful thing uh, because what we are uh, giving our environment is what we are getting back so if we leave yeah, we are getting back plus we have a generation that we have have to you know you have to look after like i have my two kids right. i know when they grow up i'm not going to be there i don't want to you know want them to live in an environment which is which is really bad so if we take small steps if we do things now that's how maybe 30 40 years down the down the line it will not be as bad bad as it is at the moment so Correct. we have to consider all these things also when you know when you think about 5 10 5 years later or 10 years later and my products are also being used by the kids like my kids are using my things i wouldn't want them to use something which is you know not good for their skin they're growing up they have baby skin and they can develop rashes or anything like that so yeah. i'm very conscious about the fact that you know things don't uh, they are good they don't harm anybody else nobody else is children or even the adults it should not be harmful correct and the more we away stay away from chemicals and this will be uh, healthy for uh, us environment everybody so a wonderful thought everybody so <laughs> if i talk about uh, the most important life lessons you have learned from your life personal and professional so what are those learnings learning i would say is um uh, you have to um uh, you have to work very hard towards anything that you want i said ghar baithe bithaye kuch nahi milta hai aapko really you will have to work for it day and night uh, for women it's it's a little difficult you know after their marriage their kids it's difficult but then you have to understand that you are not supposed to give up even in very little little steps they are going to count some day or the other they will count so little little steps that you take every day they will help you and uh, at the end of the day you are the only one who helps you know you you can only help you yourself nobody else will come every uh, if people are there for you they will support you but when you feel down when when you when you th- see things are not working and aap bahut sad and upset and you know you you aapko lagta hai ki ab kuch nahi ho sakta hai so you are the only one to motivate yourself aapko khud ke liye akele you will have to fight people are there friends are there family is there everybody supports you but the way that you can support yourself mentally emotionally physically nobody else can so you will have to take care of that you yeah. will have to keep telling your 
yourself keep motivating yourself and that's only how you can achieve anything right so first thing is you should uh, like you should work uh, hard to get things and uh, i would say ki you should be well planned well prepared for whatever you do that will help you work better and a second thing yes. is whatever you do uh, you need to understand that you have to support yourself first then only exactly. you need to support from outside so first hmm. supporter of yours is you yourself you yourself right. exactly i, I have because i mean personally ho chahe professionally ho in any field uh, till the time you don't help yourself nobody else is going to come and help you nobody will come and motivate you and outside motivation does not help if you are if you if you don't do something from within yourself i mean aap khud kuch nahi karoge to bahar ka bhi support aapko help nahi kar sakta hai this this should be very clear in your head i think from day one ki jo karna hai wo khud ke dam pe karna hai apne aap karna hai and karte rehna hai like you you will have to keep doing it little 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 will add up and you can always uh, have new ideas new uh, products new sub offerings new versions that can also happen but the thing is you have to like push yourself the most best way you can uh, that is the only yes, way exactly. you can work and the thing is challenges would be there but definitely if you keep mm. consistent uh, efforts are uh, definitely those uh, will come Yes, it will. Yes. Right. So, uh, if I talk about uh, the thing which you are doing, like handmade products, so we used to have lots of handmade products when we were young and growing, as compared mm. to now. But the trend is uh, changing a little bit, slowly, but uh, still change is there. So, what is your opinion about the same? Ha! Huh, like you said, we used to earlier, like our grandparents and before that, their their grandparents and parents, they all used to make things at home, and you know, sab apna ghar pe hi everybody, every everything was. manufactured at home and then you start getting getting everything in the market so people thought ki you know you're getting it for cheap so why why spend so much money and do it yourself you apna faltu mein you know you put your energies to it when you can get something small in the market but like i said jaise jaise wo production badhta hai the quality of the things decline so even everything is available in the market not everything is uh, you know quality wise it is sound and it is can be uh, for the long run is good for you your health or your environment so that's how i think that's why the handmade industry has come back and people are also opting for it because they can see that people are doing things with their own hands they are conscious about what they are doing how they are making things and up you're personally liable when you do something by yourself and you're selling something you become liable to that person no matter what product it is so obviously when you do something up jo handmade industry wo bahut conscious hai ki wo jo bhi banaye jo bhi kare usko acche se wo acha ho it should not you know kisi bhi tarike se koi mistake nahi ho kuch nahi ho you put in a lot of hard work to it and uh, that's why and people people uh, outside people who are buying handmade products are realizing ki ye jo jo bhi wo saman wo lete hain ek handmade industry se wo bahut consciously bana hua hota hai and uh, and ek uniqueness ka ek bahut bada factor hai people want unique things nowadays ki okay. only i should be having this not a lot of people should be wearing this probably you know clothes or hamare ghar pe koi home decor item hai so this should be like unique and different i don't want same 100 people to be using what i am using so that has also become a very big factor that people have started you know buying handmade products and the industry is booming because of that correct the uniqueness instance, and the conscious effort yeah for an instance we can take a example of sweaters like when we were young we were uh, like too young we used to wear homemade uh, sweaters which were unique exactly. in colors which were unique um, in itself so whatever we were wearing so we were unique in having that product that was kind of a this my product. yeah my kids are like that because their grandmother makes sweaters for them so they are very happy because what they Get to wear from the from her is only theirs. Nobody else has it. Correct. But once you go to the mall and once you buy something from the mall, they know that other they might just not be that person, but they know other ten people or maybe hundred people would be wearing the same same sweater like you said. Ha. Huh. So this is up to घर का एक घर का example that ये I think सबके घर पे होता था and अभी भी धीरे-धीरे वापस ये आ ही रहा है. Correct. And वो warmth जो होती थी उस product की quality wise भी and uh, and the uh, the quality of that product was really wonderful as compared to the yeah, uh, yeah. machine made product and also machine made products exactly uh, warmth was also little bit better mm. as compared to the machine made product or uh, wo skin friendly bhi zyada nowadays nowadays hand made maybe skin friendly hai hand made maybe people are putting in effort to hai but wo no because wo itne pyar se koi cheez ko banate hain wo itne acche se itna dil laga ke kuch banate hain that it comes across also very nice right because hand made you can't make hand made up 100 pieces nahi bana sakte so even like abhi jaise 
say even manish will other when he makes a handmade lehenga it's like a one unique piece you know he does not make same lehengas in hundred styles so that handmade embroidery the people are doing that now that chicken kari is coming back lots of lots of things are coming back only because of the handmade industry jo i think mass mein wo gum ho gaya tha it was getting lost somewhere and only the ha- the people who are working with hand are now bringing it back right that's really wonderful thing that we are getting back to our uh, basics that is uh, re- mm. really important and these products are really for two reasons i really like them first is they are uh, they are used like they they made by somebody uh, who is skilled in that form of art i call mm. this as art and uh, also the products which are used are uh, very natural very uh, good in quality as well as quantity uh, is also quantity good. exactly yeah. hanji so so that is a kind of product you would be having it and if somebody would be using the similar product would be having a different color or different pattern for exactly it. there would be like a slight different like you know people customize also handmade right. industry make all these and that is customization you tell a person that i want this particular color i want this particular fragrance i don't want this uh, you know i don't want this mold i want that like i do a lot of soaps so somebody for somebody comes and tells me this fragrance but i want another shade or right. i want uh, a particular color or it can all be done so person ko lagta hai you know it becomes like a special thing for them that is if mere liye bana hai Haan. it's all meant it for me it's a little costly so, but worth uh, having it it's totally worth the price yeah right so if if i talk about the scope of handmade products or businesses for future what do you see on that like how is the future expected for these products i think handmade industry is there to stay it's it's not going to go anywhere um, soon it's actually starting to boom right now it's 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 going to grow it has like grown into its full potential people this is free market so after people are going a lot because you know there they can find old used furniture and uh, other decor items so th- you know for the uniqueness you go back and you see those purane 40 50 years pehle jo woods wale jo doors right. hote the proper you can see you can see that they're coming back so that people are they want that that uniqueness back ab unko wo sabke ghar mein same darwaze ya whatever jo bhi cheez hai wo sab nahi chahiye correct so i think handmade industry has a very 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 big scope and uh, it's not going to go anywhere soon it's going to stay and as long as people want those unique items people want those special treatment ki hamare it should be just for them should be just for us i think it's going to be there yeah and also i think uh, the taste of people is developing again for these uh, handmade products and they are ready to pay higher also ha huh, a lot of yes people people uh, they don't ask you for the price nowadays first first they ask you what you're doing what's the quality like and what are they going to get the price point comes later pricing right. they mostly ask you after they've inquired about your product. that's and everything the pricing inquiry comes usually after that so yes pricing it hasn't taken a back seat but yeah it it kind of is okay that they're ready to pay a little more as long as they're getting what they're paying for correct as long as the quality and the content of the product is good they they are willing to pay that much right and people are understanding that these are artistic work because it require a huge time mm-hmm. and effort and also it is unique for unique product you have to pay higher so uh, that is kind of a trend you developing have to I, I, I think yes. this is going to improve a little more and people who have uh, paying capacity would definitely go for uh, more such products and uh, uniqueness as well as the authentic uh, products that that is really in demand mm-hmm. and also uh, antique kind of products also are in huge demand these days antiques yes that is also true i have, i i know a few people who uh, who you you know who make all these things they give you that that antique not just the look but yeah the the quality and the thing is you go back you, you remember your the old houses that used to be there uska jo look tha the interior tha decor tha and everything else so the, that is also you know people are appreciating all of that right. so yeah like you said the authenticity yes people people are looking for that nowadays and uh, india i think india people have a lot a lot of people because the young generation is so much that yes they do have the paying capacity they are willing to pay that extra rupee to to get what they want Good. and how they want it correct a uh, really uh, wonderful trend is uh, building up that's really great to know about so now coming back to you again if i talk about you are you an introvert or an extrovert kind of a person while meeting people or uh, facing audiences so what is the plus or minus of the same is i think i've had a diverse shift to what i was to what i've become now i think growing up makes you like that um i was quite extroverted earlier when i was in school but over time i have become quite an 
introvert and um, it takes me a little effort to talk to people i sit quietly and i'll listen more than i talk so that like you said is one um one good quality about being introvert is you listen you listen very carefully to what other people are saying so you're observant you know what the other person thinks you can you can read body language you can read their facial expressions while you're sitting but then since you don't talk you don't you can come across as an arrogant person because you don't talk much they'll think you're too high and mighty you know that person you, you know you don't speak and you're not friendly as okay. probably you are so this is a very major drawback and uh, in when you're in a public place when there are about 10 to 15 people and it becomes very difficult for an introvert to you know go ahead and introduce themselves hey, this is what i am so for a business person like me who's just starting their business journey who's to just you know a budding entrepreneur it's a major challenge because i have to market my product i have to tell them what i do i need to sell it so being an introvert it makes it really difficult for me to do the marketing and the selling i i'm very good at planning and executing things and thinking what to do how to do it but yeah i am uh, it takes a lot of effort for an introvert to go out and put yourself out there you know because you you have a fear that you know people will probably judge you and they will see what you they will say something and then probably it will you know it's going to hurt or w- there are lots of hundreds of things that can you know go wrong with right. it so yeah i think being an introvert is more of a it's more of a drawback than you know being positive correct so it's kind of a mixed thing uh, you you should follow both the practices what i believe and uh, that is best i so, am I'm very extrovert yeah. with people that i know but with people that i don't know i i am very cautious and i prefer staying quiet like that right that's great so uh, if i talk about your uh, journey so far who were the people supported you the most in the beginning obviously it's your parents it's your it's your siblings who support you they support your dreams they know what you want to do and uh, i've had very supportive friends and family everyone uh, whatever i wanted to do like i wanted to work in a corporate job then i and then i left it and then i joined my husband and so my my in-laws were very supportive of me when i wanted to work when i when i told them i don't want to sit at home and i want to work then after i had my first child and i was at home for some time and when i came across this uh, business idea when, and when i spoke to them about it so i never got to hear any negative about it i was it was always very positive you want to do this if you're passionate about it then you should go ahead and do it so i have not heard no don't do this no don't do that you know it's not going to be easy i knew that it was not going to be easy because having after having children you have to look at a lot of things right but i've had a support from everyone all my family both both sides of my family my friends now my even my kids when i work late if i have a big project and if i'm working i so there's been times when i've come home at 9:30 10 because i have had an exhibition or i have had a big you know i've got a big order and i have to work on that so my son who's only 3 now even he hasn't complained much they sleep sometimes they are off to sleep before i come home they go off to sleep and because my in-laws are so supportive they take care of them while i am at work here so i've had a very good supportive environment i would say great no from the beginning from my childhood till now i've had it's been a very good journey wonderful so uh, that's really uh, great if i talk about motivation and inspiration in your life how you get that like i said the first motivation that you get is from yourself you know you have to keep motivating yourself and uh since i've started this entrepreneurial journey i have come across a lot of women you know who are working a lot of uh, working moms i've seen i've read about i have uh, you know i've seen their work and i think that if they can then you know why can't i why can't i do it if there are so many people who you know who have little you know lesser means than i do and they're still doing so much they're still you know getting up every day going to work doing this doing that taking care of their kids they Taking care of their family, so that that's a very major thing. My husband has also been, uh, you know, like really, he has helped me a lot. He's been, you know, he's been a very big motivator behind my whatever I've been doing. He has supported whatever I've dreamt of, whatever I want to do. And sometimes when I feel let down that you know this is not working out, I should just probably you know pack up and stop. But he's given me that push that no, you can, you know, just keep going. So I've had that motivation. He's been there to motivate me, and uh, social media also motivates you a lot. if you wanted to so you know you see so you see strangers you see a lot of people who are into your own field and you get motivation from little little things in life like well, my children also when i'm doing something when they feel happy that yeah my mom our mom is doing something she you know she goes out there and you know the, the hustle is there everything and they feel proud about it so that is also a very big motivation for you like i said my my life revolves around my kids a lot so when i get to hear good things from them 
I am doubly and superly motivated after that. Right. That's really wonderful. So uh, if I talk about your take on success, uh, how does it look like to you? Success, it is important. That's what keeps you going because, you know, you want to be there. You want to do a certain thing. You want to achieve a certain level. So yeah, success is important. But, you know, I'm not like a big go-getter. Just, you know, I'm not running behind it. It is important. I know it, it it's, it's there and I want to be successful. so i want i want people to know my name i want that kind of fame and uh, money that kind of success gets it is there but i am not like a a very die hard fan i would say or a, i would uh, run and i have never i think i've never been like i'm not laid back but I'm somewhere in between success is like you you at the end of the day what you're doing you are satisfied you're happy with, with you know with where you've reached not just professionally personally also and aapko uh, at the end of the day you know you you when you're going home you're satisfied ki ha aaj jo aaj ka din jo nikla it whatever it was it was good it was i had a productive day i have done this and tomorrow is going to be like that so these little little things only i think add up to your success and that's But that's what I want. I think successful life for me would be that only to have those little achievements, to be happy at the end of the day, emotionally sound, and uh, you know, no cribbing. Jitna hai, I'm, I, you know, you're happy. You want to achieve more. Yes, that is true. But uh, uh, I am not going to cry about things that I I could not get or did not do. I'm just going to you know roll over and do something else. Do it in a different way and achieve whatever I want to achieve and just be happy. Happy is very important. happy people i think are the most successful people in the world right. if you're not happy then nothing that nothing matters so, right. that's what i want to be that that's what success is be happy right. be satisfied and you know go live a good life true that's really wonderful because uh, whatever we do the purpose of that is to be happy and if we are happy whatever we are doing with so that is what makes us more uh, like successful more uh, success also being more meaningful to our life and also uh, whatever mm. we are doing we are creating getting an impact also when we are happy when we are uh, satisfied with what we are doing so focus should I be i think any happy person you know any happy person would be would would have or would create an impact because other people would see whatever you're doing is giving you satisfaction and they will get motivated by looking at you they will they would also want to achieve what you are doing and the way you're doing it basically and uh, if if the people who are looking up to you who are motivated by you who want to do things the way you are doing i think you you're quite successful if if you know people are there looking at you like that right. that's a quite success story and your life is successful that way yeah correct that's really wonderful one so uh, any message advice you would like to share uh, with our viewers and listeners message or advice is i am i am not very learned or very experienced to you know give such uh, messages or advice but with whatever little learning that i've had whatever whatever i've achieved is um, just just keep keep doing things just keep rolling don't stop don't falter you will have failures there will be you know little little breakages little stop little stops that you'll have to take probably little breaks that you'll have to take but do, don't be demotivated uh just just keep doing what you're doing and motivate yourself apne aas paas ke logo se thoda inspiration lena zaroor bahut zaruri hai people who are doing things look up to people imbibe good things from other people instead of you know the negativity aas paas ke logo mein jo acha ho raha hai just look at them imbibe that and uh, just keep doing what you think is good for you and be happy like i said that that's the most important you have to learn how to be happy yeah right. learn to, because i think current generation current generation uh, really doesn't know how to be happy they they crib a lot so one major thing that is required that everybody should know is how to be satisfied and happy with their lives right so that's the biggest thing that you should learn how to do correct first thing is you should keep on moving and have a, a right direction second is you need to be focused on on whatever you are doing and thirdly you need to motivate yourself you need to push yourself towards your push goal objective yeah. whatever and then uh, whatever you are doing you should be like kind of have a kind of uh, satisfaction with in that that you are doing whatever you are doing creating is good good for you good for uh, people around and good for the society as a whole around you exactly right. so then only you would be able to make an impact and that impact would really be powerful and you also mentioned about young generation these days they are cribbing a lot and they are not feeling <laughs> satisfied with whatever whatever they are doing so that is 
is a reason yeah, of the gen z like to say yeah expectation mm-hmm. maybe over expectations we can say over expectations yes the society's over expectations correct so we need to build on that also what expectations we should keep from ourselves and we also define what kind of expectations we should keep from others others yes that's true right so all these things uh, if we follow that will definitely give us great results and uh, leads to a success it will definitely lead to a success that that's what that's true being right. motivated being positive that's that that's a very big mantra to success right so uh, i must say it was really amazing having you here you have shared so many uh, wonderful things like guys thank you thank you so much for about your life having me your experiences and whatever you have done so far in your life and how you started your uh, career how you um, like turned into an entrepreneurial journey so uh, all of that was really uh, motivating and inspiration in inspirational and you are doing Thank so much so new much. things as well so great uh, learning from you today wonderful so looking forward to hear more from you again soon uh, in in upcoming sessions maybe and i hope so definitely i will look forward to it as much uh, you know myself sure thank you so very much uh, neha it was wonderful having you here thank you thank you to thank you so much thank you for having me sure and also i will uh, share your social media links along with the interview so that people can be in touch with you take your help oh, that, uh, that's that's wonderful is. thank you so guys don't forget to check that out too thank you so very much everyone for watching and listening i hope you all must have gathered a lot of information and enjoyed watching it don't forget to like share subscribe have a good time thank you and bye bye